I'm thinking of going back to my parents' house to give birth. I've been staying there for a few months. I said to my mother-in-law, She's probably going to make sarcastic remarks about who will take care of the household chores. Thinking that way, my mother-in-law said something beyond my expectations. Oh, really? Then why don't you just stay at your parents' house forever? I don't want to see the face of a parasite. If you want, why don't you get a divorce? I widened my eyes in shock. And at the same time, I realized that she was completely misunderstanding me. If that's what she wants, then I don't have to hold back either. I couldn't help but laugh a little. My mother-in-law didn't seem to have any interest in me and didn't notice. She's so carefree and aware that she is about to hit rock bottom in her life. My name is Christina, a 32-year-old housewife. I started dating my husband Aaron in college and we got married after becoming working professionals. Aaron is very kind and always care about others. He has saved me many times. But when I told him that again, he said with a bashful look, It's because of you, Christina, that I became kind to others. Huh? Me? It was news to me that I had been the catalyst for Aaron's kindness. I had always thought that Aaron had a kind nature from the beginning. Actually, I used to be a troubled teenager until high school. Because of that, I didn't have any close friends. I wondered if I would always be alone even after entering university. When I first entered there, I got lost on campus, remember? Ah, oh, was it during the first orientation? Listening to his story, I remembered our first encounter. He seemed to struggle with reading maps, and I, as a fellow freshman, approached him and offered help. At that time, you said, We have the same orientation, let's go together. When you invited me with an innocent smile, I thought you were a very beautiful person. Hearing him say that, I couldn't help but blush. But in reality, he didn't confess his feelings to me until much later. Did you fall in love at first sight with me? Perhaps? When I asked that, he laughed and shook his head. It's a little different from that. At that time, it was more admiration than love. I thought your soul was beautiful. I wanted to get to know you as a person. I wanted to be a kind person like you. I wanted to be someone who could reach out to anyone, just like you. So I worked hard to become that person, you know? From my perspective, I believe he has always been kind to people even back then. He didn't tell me much about his past back when we started dating. And I didn't really care about it because I was already in love with who he was. I even knew that he was the one for me from the early stage of our relationship. That's how sincere he was. And now, even though I heard that he had a troubled past, I wasn't surprised. Since I met his parents after getting married, I can imagine how they were. They were, if I may say, nothing like Aaron. That's because when I met his parents, they looked down on me. My parents have unbelievably bad personalities. Aaron had informed me about it beforehand, so I was already aware. They didn't even listen to me or Aaron and frowned blandly and said, What a poor looking girl! Aaron must have had bad taste in women. I hope you got a good education. How good were your grades? I was surprised that my in-laws were not afraid to say such a thing when they first met me. My husband apologized to me the whole time and I felt sorry for him. They treated my husband the same all his life. Whenever Aaron got a low score on a test since he was young, his parents would say things like, Why is this child so stupid? Is he really our child? 
He often heard words that you wouldn't say to your own child. It must have been tough not to be influenced by such a family environment. Aaron finally gained his freedom from his parents when he went to college and started living on his own. He made efforts to become a good person and developed his current calm personality. Now, we have met, married, and everyday life is filled with happiness. And to add to our happiness, we received even more joyful news. I became pregnant. I wonder if it's a girl or a boy. While eagerly awaiting the birth of our child, we decided to love our child with all our hearts. Since Aaron's work hours overlap, I called my mother-in-law. What is it? As soon as I started speaking, my mother-in-law responded with a burdensome tone. I'm pregnant. Oh, a grandchild will be born? Is it a boy or a girl? No, I don't know yet. Girls are no good. They can't earn money. If you give birth, or make sure it's a boy. I absolutely won't accept anything else. Oh, that's... As for the gender, it's something that we can't control. It's the wife's job to figure that out. I can't stay silent while my precious eldest son is being exploited. I couldn't believe how she was arrogant and looked down on me. Even though they always targeted Aaron with sarcastic remarks, now they suddenly call him their precious eldest son. I restrained myself from responding and decided to calm my mind. Well, this is just a notification. Excuse me for now. Saying that, I hung up the phone. When Aaron came back, I informed him about his mother's reaction. Upon hearing it, Aaron, of course, didn't agree with his mother's opinion and had a very displeased expression on his face. Precious elder son? Are you kidding me? My mother is always looking for someone to attack and persistently targets them with relentless attacks. That's why when the target is someone other than me, she suddenly starts calling me that. Anyway, you don't have to listen to her at all. I nodded in agreement. Since my mother-in-law never called us, I thought it was fine that way, but surprisingly, my mother-in-law showed up at our house a few months before the expected delivery date. Even though it's far from her house, she came to our house without any prior contact. She barged into our house and started telling me what to do. If you can support parasites, then support me too. Am I the parasite she's referring to? As I was close to giving birth and my belly had grown big, I couldn't move much even if she commanded me. But I'm sorry, but... I want to rest, because my belly is already big. As soon as I said that, my mother-in-law suddenly got angry. What are you even here for in this house? You're just a housewife, right? Then take care of me and Aaron. You useless person. Both Aaron and I were taken aback. Cut it up, mom. If you plan on biting Christina any further, I'll kick you out of this house right now. Being reprimanded by her own son, my mother-in-law quieted it down for the time being. However, she still gave me sharp glances as usual. It seems that she had a fight with my father-in-law and left the house. My mom is relentless. If it continues like this, it will stress you out. Maybe it's better for us to escape from my mom. How, how about going back to your parents' house for the delivery? What Aaron said made the most sense. The most important thing for us right now is the baby in my belly. Yeah, I think that's the best option. After explaining the situation, my father agreed to come and pick me up. The next day, 
I approached my mother-in-law, who was lounging on a sofa. I've decided to go back to my parents' house to give birth. I'll be staying there for a few months. Thinking that she would say something unpleasant again, my mother-in-law smirked and spoke. Why don't you just stay at your parents' house forever? I don't want to see the face of a parasite. Maybe you should get a divorce then. Come to think of it, she has always called me a parasite. She probably thinks I've been relying solely on Aaron's income. Since I didn't want to have any involvement with my in-laws, we never discussed our income or financial matters. So my mother-in-law must have misunderstood the situation. Well, I should get going then. After that, I returned to my parents' house as planned. Aaron finished work on the weekend and joined us at night. It seems like your mother intends to rely on you completely, Aaron. That's why I think she'll keep clinging to our house. I share my thoughts with my husband. He had a troubled expression on his face. That's when I made a suggestion. I think we should sell the house. My words surprised both Aaron and my parents. In fact, that house was a gift from my grandfather when I got married. By the way, my grandfather is a well-known real estate tycoon in that area. He dotes on me a lot. When I became a working adult, I was entrusted with managing my grandfather's real estate. So the house is under my name. If I explain the situation to my grandfather, or I'm sure we can sell it quickly. So I told my grandfather about it, and I can't believe it has come to this. Your husband's parents were also living in a property I manage, I think. They hurt my precious Christina, so they deserve to face consequences. Don't worry, leave everything to me. He had a wicked smile on his face, and in reality. The eviction process finished surprisingly quickly. Aaron was present during the eviction. Your grandpa is amazing. He didn't just bring real estate people, but also strong masculine guys with them. It's those guys swiftly moved all the belongings out. And your grandpa shut my mom up by saying, "Is my granddaughter indebted to you?" Oh man, he was so cool. He excitedly shared the story with me. It seems like my mother-in-law hurriedly returned to her house. However, since my grandfather got involved in this incident, she called me. Hey, Christina, why do I have to be kicked out? Moreover, selling Aaron's house without permission is a crime. No, that house belongs to me. What are you talking about? That house was a wedding gift from my grandfather. So, you have no right to kick me out and continue living there. Taking this opportunity, I decided to tell her everything. Besides, I do have my own income. What? You've just been staying at home all this time. I have passive income, so I don't need to leave the house often. Passive income? I own some apartments and parking spaces, you know. I work more than someone who suddenly intrudes into other people's homes and treats a pregnant woman like a servant. Don't you think? You? That's not something you should say to your mother-in-law. Aaron wants to talk to you. So let me put you on speaker mode. I handed the phone to Aaron. Aaron, you should leave that arrogant and useless wife and come back home. My mother-in-law was panicking, and her voice sounded out. Mom, I've made up my mind. Aaron, I'm cutting ties with you and Dad. Huh? What are you talking about? Aaron glanced at me briefly. This family with Christina is my true family, so I no longer consider you and Dad as my family. 
I don't want to have anything to do with you anymore. Hey, Ron, don't say such things. What will happen to us if you don't support us? You're still the same, Mom. You and Dad always lived your lives only for your own reasons. Even though I'm related to you, I didn't always feel like family. And I didn't want to feel like family. That's why I left home and really came back. So what? It doesn't matter now, does it? It doesn't matter now, huh? Mom, I even feel sorry for you now, you know? Maybe I should have done this a long time ago. Cut the crap, Aaron. If you're so energetic, you'll be fine. Anyway, I won't let you meet our baby no matter what. And we'll never see each other again. Goodbye, Mom. Say the same to Dad for me. Aaron, wait! Don't you dare! He hung up the phone. Looking at my husband, who was in silence, my heart ached. He said earlier to me that he's gonna cut ties with them, but didn't want to hate them. I was proud of such a strong husband who never lost his dignity. Later, I found out the reason why my mother-in-law was pressuring Aaron to support them. It turns out my father-in-law lost his job. Because of that, my in-laws argued every day, ran out of money, and fell behind on rent. That's when my grandfather stepped in. He evicted my in-laws from the property for not only being behind on rent, but also for their lack of credibility. No, my in-laws never got to know our new address. And so, the ill-tempered couple, now estranged from their son, started living in a live-in job. Even at work, they couldn't hide their personality and quickly became isolated from their colleagues. Yet, with debts to repay, they couldn't quit their jobs and have been working while feeling uncomfortable. Well, I hope they would learn a lesson. As for us, we were able to safely welcome the adorable baby girl. We named her April. She's the most beautiful thing ever. My husband tears up holding her in his arms. I am confident that I can raise my daughter to be a good human being with such a faithful husband. My family is also excited about April. Especially my grandfather. Our new home is comfortable. And today, we are enjoying our busy yet joyful days. <laughs>